Hello, everyone. I'm Maria Raquel Bossi, Senior Director of Education and International Initiatives at Film Independent. And in that capacity, I'm fortunate to lead Global Media Makers, a cultural exchange program designed to foster relationships between American and international film professionals. Global Media Makers is supported through a partnership between Film Independent and the United States Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. Before we start, I would like to thank our lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, and our virtual screening sponsor, partner, screening partner, I would say, Vision Media. I am really excited to introduce this special conversation with Tunisian filmmaker Najib Belkadi, who is here to talk about his beautiful film, Look at Me, which he developed through our Global Media Makers Residency in 2018 here in Los Angeles. Welcome, Najib. Hello. Hi, everyone. So great to see you. And thank you for sharing your film with us and our international audience joining us today. I don't know how many countries are joining, but I know there's a lot of people from a lot of countries joining us right now. My pleasure. And uh, our moderator for this session is the president of Film Independent, Josh Welsh. Thank you, Josh. Hi, and Josh. <laughs> take it away, Josh. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, well, it is really a pleasure to be here today with you, Najib. Thank you so much for, for taking time halfway across the world to be, to be part of this conversation. Um, and I also want to just say, you know, my experience at Film Independent Global Media Makers was, has been a transformative program for us. For many years, Film Independent, we were, were based in Los Angeles. We were a, a nonprofit film arts organization really focused on, on connecting and serving the, the Los Angeles film community. And with Global Media Makers, we have been able to connect with filmmakers all around the world, uh, especially in the Middle East, North Africa, Turkey, and now also in South Asia. And it's a program that has, to me, has made the world feel smaller and more connected in the best possible way. Um, and for Film Independent to be able to try and serve those filmmakers in different regions has been incredibly gratifying. And we, I can just say on behalf of myself and, and Maria and everyone here, we've learned so much from being able to talk to and get to know filmmakers around the world. And um, Najib, I, we, I'm, I'm also really excited for today because it's normally at Film Independent when we're interviewing or a filmmaker having a conversation, it's, it's tied to the release of their film usually. And in this case, your film came out in 2018. And I think it's a really interesting opportunity to talk not just about the making of the film, but also its release, its reception, things that you've seen as, as the film has played out. So um, again, thank you for being here. Um, oh, thanks. And congrats. I mean, this is such a beautiful film. It was wonderful to have a chance to rewatch it as well. Um, thank you. I assume most people watching this Q&A have seen the film, but if by any chance you haven't, go online, you can find the film, find it and watch it. You'll be very happy that you did. Um, but Najib, let's, let's just go back to the beginning. Um, yeah. Tell us, um, you, what was the origin of this project for you? How, how did you come to, what was the seed idea that you had? How did you first start working on it? Well, I, actually I, I was writing another script, a completely different story. And uh, I woke up one day and I came across these pictures uh, of this, um, American photographer called uh, Timothy Archibald from San Francisco mm -hmm. and he did a um, beautiful like a stunning series about his um, son uh, with autism who, who had autism and, and 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 the pictures were a way of connection like they connected together through the pictures uh, and he's a photographer and th th that series of pictures just uh, overwhelmed me to to the point of deciding to make a script out of this these pictures and 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 I called my my producer and I told him I'm I'm switching I'm I'm doing something else and he was like what because I was in the process of writing and a totally whole different story and um, I told him there's I saw these pictures and they I don't know what happened to me I I, I mean I it was so powerful that I decided to. Um, you know, th that these pictures would be like the starting point of, uh, of this film that, that you have watched. So um, the film has nothing to do with the pictures themselves. But I, I mean, um, um, 
it, it's, it's the, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's something happened in me. And, and I said to myself, and I saw the whole film, like the end and, and the whole story between the father and the son. And that's how it began. So um, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a, a beautiful story of inspiration where it can just come from unexpected, unpredictable and, places. And the, the photographer came to, the, to, to see the film actually in Los Angeles last year. My gosh. Yes. Wow. Yeah, at the festival. In your had festival. You, had you met him previously? Of course. You have? No, no, that, oh, no, that was you, the first time. My gosh, that's beautiful. Wow. Yes. So, so you saw these pictures and they inspired, so you did, I'm assuming based on what you're saying, you didn't have a personal connection to autism or people with autism previous to that. This really came through, through seeing his work and yes. then the, the story came to you. Yes. Um, how about the, I'm curious also just about are you drawn to father-son stories? Was that something that resonated with you in a personal way? Or how did like you saw these pictures? What, what led you to focus on the, the father and son? Actually, I, th I think that the film is not only about autism. It's, it's, um, it's beyond that. It's, it's autism, mm -hmm. but it's, it's seen through the, the point of view of a father and a, a son also as well. Two points of view, uh, actually. And um, I think... Um, well, I lost my father like two day, uh, two years before, like 2016, I think, and it wasn't it wasn't a great relationship. Like me and my father, uh, we had our ups and downs. Anyways, so um, but when he died, I, I think that uh, his death was an eye opener for me. Like like I I, I was seeing life in a different way, and I think that uh, probably I didn't do it. I mean. Uh, on purpose, but I, I think that this script and this story and, and this connection um, came also from that part of me, uh, you know, an unfulfilled part, mm -hmm. like and, and that unfulfilled part of my life, that, which is the relationship between me and my father, you know what I mean? So uh, this is probably my homage to my father, this film, mm -hmm. you know, it's two really? years after his death. So um, I think so. I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's um, it's so interesting hearing you say that because when when I think about the film, the and you alluded to this, it's not it's not just a story about autism. It's I mean, there's a lot going on in the movie, but those two central characters are both so strong. And what's nice about the film is you allow us to inhabit both of them, like both of those points of view. I, like the father to me is so fully realized. He's a very flawed character but you see sort of what he's grappling with and dealing with and totally ill-equipped yes. to deal with initially but he doesn't give up and there's a sort yeah. of you know an effort and commitment there that's it's beautiful to watch throughout the film thank you um, yeah i i think that the flaws are part of the personality of the character himself i, I mean i i don't like those characters which are which are like black or white like you know the, the good guy and the bad guy Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have a bad guy and a good guy in, in, in us. And it, it, it's, um, it's what's interesting about the, the most interesting characters in, in, the, in the history of cinema are those, those characters with gray, you know what I mean? So I just wanted to explore that gray area in the character. And um, I mean, when you see the film, like in, in the, in the beginning of the film, like this, the main character, the father is, 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 is yes, is, is, he has so many flaws and, and you, don't, you don't like the character, but uh, you know, uh, something happens in, and something is triggered uh, upon when, when he sees this child and, and what he tries like to connect with him, you know, even for the wrong reasons, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but, but something happens. And, and I think what happens in the film happens to the audience as well. So uh, like it triggers something within the audience and, and we begin to, you know, have feelings for the father and to see uh, that those gray areas have some light in them and, and that they are bright and, and that this guy is a human being, just, just all of us, you know? Najib, could you talk a little bit, let's go back even before the film, if you could talk a bit about your background uh, yes. previous to directing. You're, you've been, you're an actor, you've acted in lots of things for, for yeah. a long period of time. Yeah. Is, that where you, is that where your creative pursuits began, was in acting? Or what was your, what was your entree into filmmaking in general? Well, actually I have an MBA, so I, I come from a totally different... <laughs> 
<laughs> from a totally different world. But, but um, when I was at university, I, I knew that that wasn't my, my fate or my future or my mm -hmm. you know, future job. So, uh, so when I got my, my degree, I gave it to my mother. I told her, you can be proud of me now. So um, I'm, doing my, I'm doing it my way and I'm doing my life. So anyway, so yes, I'm an actor. I, I began as an actor. Uh, and then um, I began as an extra, actually. And then I became an actor. In Tunisia? Uh, or where yes. were you living at that point? In yes, Tunisia. in Tunisia, absolutely. Uh, and I did many uh, also international films and stuff like that, like Italian, French films and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, and so, uh, but uh, when I was in, the, you know, um, um, while working uh, as an actor, you know, on sets, um, I always felt that my place wasn't, you know, I love acting as well, but I felt that I had, um, you know, my own ideas and that I wanted to film them and I wanted to show them to the world and that mm -hmm. I wanted to be at, right there at that place, which is like, you know, at that spot, which is like the director's spot, not mine, you know what right. I mean? Like behind the camera. And that's how it began. And, and so um, the rest is history. I, 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 I think that directing is not about, like, like, it's not a technical thing. Like, you know, it, it's all about how you feel uh, the story and how you, you want to tell it to, to the audience. That's the most important thing. And, and then what we call technique in French, like the, the technical side of it, it's nothing. It's, it's you learn it. Now, uh, am I correct that the first few things you directed were documentaries? You started in documentary and then moved into fiction? Well, actually, I, I directed um, TV shows, um, like um, kind of a, like now it's a cult TV show that I did 20 years ago. And then um, my first thing for cinema was a documentary, actually, yes, called VHS Kalusha, which got selected in Sundance, actually, in competition mm -hmm. in 2007. And, and then my second film uh, was a fictional film, which is Bastardo, that I did in 2013. Okay, so my, my first movie, yeah, my, my, well, my first film is a documentary. Absolutely. And what was, tell a little bit about the start of, just by way of background. The first one, it's called yeah. VHS Kalusha. It's, it's about this character, like this crazy guy and great guy, like from, from a very, very poor neighborhood who used to make films. He, he, he is a house painter, actually, and who makes films in VHS with a wedding photographer. And uh, he buys his props and stuff, you know, uh, in, 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 the, in, in the Sunday market. And he makes his casting, you know, and he uh, gets his actors in the neighborhood, in this very poor neighborhood. And he makes films like he, he, he did Dracula. He did, um, he did like genre films like Dracula. He did um, mm -hmm. uh, Western films and stuff like that, you know, and, 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 and just, you know, it's, it's an amazing story. It's, it's, a, it's about love of cinema and, and about how this character, even though his films are, you know, maybe, um, you know, um, not that uh, great if we, if, we, if we try to look at them from a cinema perspective. But, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's great the way he does them. And if you see like how the the friends and the family and his mother and all the people surrounding him are, are, were how they helped him with in making his film. It's just amazing. Like, uh, and this is like the story of the whole film. Mm -hmm. So, so by the time you came to look at me, you had a body of work. You were known in Tunisia. You, you'd done documentary and fiction. Um, I'd love to hear you talk a bit about, well, I feel, I want to come back to the writing in a minute, but let's, since we're here to talk about, I think it'd be really interesting to hear you elaborate on how you got the film set up and made and producer, like it's, you know, it's the independent film the world over is hard to get made, hard to get financed. Um, this is a drama. Um, I can't imagine it was easy to find the financing for it, but t tell us what that process was like of getting this put, put together. Well, I, I mean, the process of financing a film is always hard. I mean, it's, it's never an easy, it's the, the hardest, you know, a uh, step before making a film and it's the, uh, and it's the hardest for the filmmaker because, you know, it can take like two or three years, you know, 
Mm-hmm. If it takes me like a year and in writing the film, I know that I won't be making the film upon, you know, finishing the last draft of the, of the script. I have to wait for two or three years. And then that took me, it took me like three years to finance the film and to find the money for the film, you know? Well, like 35 to 40% of, of the money is given to us by commission in the, um, we have a commission here, uh, state commission, which is, mm-hmm. which is, um, which is the uh, cinema commission and the ministry of culture. Okay, but then we have to look for the rest of the mo- of the money elsewhere. So uh, it might be France or Italy or Switzerland or Spain or whatever you know, uh, wherever. Yeah. So um, so it's a very hard process, and sometimes you know, um, as a filmmaker, I'm, you know, most of the time you feel that you you you're ahead of your film because you are waiting to make the film, and and then sometimes. You want to do something else, and and then you look back and and you read the script, and and you don't want to do it anymore. You, you know what I mean? So because yeah. you have to wait for the money, and then and then it's a script that you wrote like three or four years ago, and then right. and then do I still am I still in that process in that in that state of mind? Do I want to make that film? You know, you always have those kinds of the, that that kind of questions before shooting and and sometimes and most of the time i think that the filmmakers are always ahead of their films ahead like i mean that the the scripts are like like they're like two or three years uh, right right like behind you know what i mean <clears throat> and um anyway yeah does your mba come in handy in that are you very involved in the financing and the producing aspect of filmmaking well, I have, no, and I don't think so, because um, I don't remember any, <laughs> any of the things that I studied. I, I have to be frank. Anyways, no, no, because um, I have a production company, which is called um, Propaganda Productions, and uh, uh, I'm, okay, so I have a producer and a business partner, who is Ahmed Marzouk. He's in charge of the, of the, of the of production, you know, and I don't get involved in production. It's not really my, you know, um, my cup of tea. I'm more into like when I, if I'm a director, I'm, I'm in charge of my film, but then uh, I read all the scripts that we produce and, and I um, try to, um, I talk to, to the directors and we work on the scripts and stuff like that. So I'm more into the artistic side of the, um, of the, um, you know, production process but like production itself like it's it's a it. so i don't look for money okay i'm um, going back to the the story of look at me I'd, I'd love to hear you talk a bit more about the writing process and yes. some of the other elements of the film i mean for one there's of course the, the issue of somebody returning from france to tunisia and that you know the that story element seems very important and central mm-hmm. um and if you could just talk, you know, a bit more about the other elements outside of the, you know, the, the autism inspiration and the father. Yes. Son. Well, the inspiration came from the pictures I told you about. And, and then uh, I, I, had, I had the canvas. I, I mean, I, I knew exactly uh, where, uh, how to write the story. I had like, a, like, like I knew exactly where to go. I think so at the time, but um, what I didn't know is um, how to do it. Uh, and that's why I, that's how I, I, um, I, th- I think that you don't do a film about autism without knowing what is exactly autism. Even though I didn't want to talk about the, the, like the clinical side or the scientific side of, of the syndrome in the mm-hmm. film, but I, I had to know about it as well. Cause, 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 you know, um, in the film, like you have some details which are extremely important and, and you have to know that. So I, um, I studied a lot and I did a lot of research and, and I, um, like articles, like stories, like, like, uh, I talked to, to doctors, to uh, educators, to uh, um, and um, I filmed many children with autism as well, you know, mm-hmm. and I did a, a, a little film so with fifteen children which were in uh, at, at the center, and um, 
it, it, it was a life changing experience um, uh, because I spent two years, um, you know, filming these children and, and you know, th these kids and, and they were, they, they changed my view uh, about everything. You know what I mean? Because uh, cause it, it wasn't about autism anymore. Right. In the middle of the process, it was something else. It was about, uh, uh, you know, um, human feelings. It, it was deeper than that. Uh, so, um, so I was, um, I, I wrote like a treatment and then I spent like those two years in centers and, you know, filming children, kids with autism and, and um, researching. And then I came back to writing and I would write and go to centers at the same time. So, uh, and, and there's this, this boy that I met um, who was, uh, th that I think, who was the main inspiration for the character of the, of the, of the kid in the film. And um, uh, at, at the time, I, I, at that time, I was filming um, all of the 15 or 16 children, uh, you know, in, in the center. But, but then my camera switched to him and, 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 and I was, mm -hmm. I, I focused on that specific, you know, kid because he <laughs> was the most interesting or he was the, the most interesting for my film. You know, all of them were interesting, but he, I don't know why he, he, he had that special thing and, uh, and he was the main inspiration for the character of the, of, of the kid in the film, you know? Was he that same, roughly the same age, like around nine? Yes, absolutely. Eight, nine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And so, um, and then I, I met this uh, Raleigh Lacroix, who's, um, who's a great, great, you know, um, um, screenwriter. Uh, she worked on most uh, on many films like uh, Kishish, you know who Kishish is, the, the, the director. Um, and she has a son with autism, so she knows very well the, you know, the syndrome and uh, she worked on the film as well. She didn't write with me actually, but uh, she read every every draft of the script and we would talk for hours about it and and she helped me a lot you know in, in the writing process as well and that's very that's very important i think mm -hmm. you know to have someone with experience reading your script and she had both like she she knew something about scripts and screenwriting and she knew something about the syndrome itself so uh, that was extremely helpful so once you had the, the script in a good place, I'm, I'm curious, did you then go out and secure your financing and then get your cast? Or did you put your cast, I'm especially interested in how you came up with your two leads for Youssef and, and Lutfi. Did they yeah. help, did, did the actor playing Lutfi help with the financing or did he come on? Oh, out? absolutely not. No, 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 no. Um, yeah. I mean, I never, I never wrote a script while thinking about, while having someone in mind. Right. Like, like an actor or an actress. I never did that before. I, I never did it because I find it limiting. Mm -hmm. I, it's, um, it narrows your field of, you know, uh, of action, you know? So um, uh, I, don't want, I, I don't want to be influenced by, uh, you know, um, how my character should look like or something or these kind of questions in the script. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I always do the same thing. Like I write the script, um, we try to finance the film, okay? And then I begin the casting process. And in this film, when I was in Los Angeles in, when was it, the 2018? Mm -hmm. 17 or 18. Uh, 17, 17, okay? I was in pre-production. I was in pre-production, so uh, we were we were, like uh, we, we were talking about the name, names, names, names. Who is going to, like, with me and my first assistant, we were you, you know talking about who would be, you know, uh, who, who are the, like the actors we're gonna call for the uh, the casting uh, and the auditions, and uh, and when I was there, like uh, two months before filming, I didn't even know who was going to play the role of, of the father wow. uh, and, uh, and, and I didn't have, I, like my questions to all the people I talked to in the program were about the autistic, uh, you know, uh, child. 
you know? Because cause, cause my question was like, uh, am I going to cast like an actor? And where am I going to find like a, an eight year old boy who would be like this, like this diamond, like, like <laughs> this, absolutely, he has, he has to be yeah. gold, you know? And, and uh, if I don't find the actor, uh, uh, am I going to jeopardize my film and look for, and, and try to make it with an, a child, like a kid with autism, mm -hmm. really? You know what I mean? And that would change like the whole film and probably, you know, or, and, and the other question is, is it ethical like to make a, a child with autism play in a film? You know, you, you ask yourself this kind of questions and it's, it's like, and, and I thought to myself, if I don't find the, the boy, I'm not making the film. And I found him. And how did you find him? And what was your, what was your process like? Did you- Through Facebook. <laughs> oh my God, really? Yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's that simple. It's a, my first assistant, you know, uh, he, he, uh, I know he wrote down something like two lines on his, uh, on his profile and then it got you know shared by two or three friends and then uh, and then the mother of the of the boy uh, saw the ad and so she called and they came and uh, it was a it was a huge revelation like like that day I, I won't forget that day that that was like one of the greatest moments of you know during the making of that film, uh, it's, uh, it, it was amazing. Like when he came to, like, like you know, the, this little tiny boy, when he, you know, he came in, into the room, like he filled the space with an aura. He had something like a halo. I don't know what it is. I, I, only great actors have that, you know? Right. And so like he, he, something was, he had something bigger than him, like, you know, and it was glowing. I was like, what? And then I explained to him and the whole thing and the character and we did the audition. He was amazing. He was, he was just stunning, stunning. So did you start with him and then cast the father and the rest of the parts? Around? No, we were doing, no, no, no. We, um, um, I, was, I always, um, when I came back to Tunis from Los Angeles, I had an idea about who would be the father. It was him, it was Nidan actually. And um, we, we weren't like, we were looking for, for all the actors at the same time. So we, uh, but, um, <clears throat> but the, first, the first thing that we had to do is to, is to um, you know, uh, bring, bring, bring the father and the son, you know. I knew they were good, but I, I, I didn't know if the chemistry would you know so sometimes it doesn't work mm -hmm. so uh and when they met it was like it was great it, it was amazing like uh it there there was something magic in the air and that's how mm -hmm. it happened so um Beautiful. but we we spent like three or four weeks rehearsing 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 working with the with the kid and with the father and the other characters as well you know so it was it was a great experience wow so, Najib, I, I have so many questions, but uh, I want to jump to one in specific I want to jump to is, is, and you touched on this just a moment ago, but I'd love to hear anything you want to share about your experience, sort of where you were in the process, and then your experience in global media makers. Like, what were the, what was that, how did that, how did being in global media makers dovetail with your prepping the film? And were there, looking back on that experience now, were there things you got in Global Media Makers that really helped you with the film or things that you were able to explore yeah, through the process? It was great because um, I came with, uh, with one of the, like, like the, I don't know, 10th or 11th draft of the script. But then we worked on the script with Ruth and... Um, Ruth Atkinson, who's one of the screenwriting advisors. Ruth, Ruth, yeah. Ruth, and, and um, what was his name? Was oh it my Jeff God. Stockwell? Give me, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Jeff and Ruth. So we worked on the script, and um, that was great. I, I mean, that was uh, very good. And then all the sessions that we had with the uh, producers and the directors, and all my questions about the casting about you know so um i thought i was going coming to global media makers just to you know uh, um 
have like a global thing, like a, like a general thing about, you know, probably American cinema or something like that. But I found myself working on my, on my own project that I was going to, you know, at the time to shoot in like within three or four months. You know what I mean? I was in pre-production when I came to, to LA. So sure. it was really, really valuable. It, it was really great to work on the script with Ruth and Jeff and, uh, uh, and to have also the feedback of some producers and um, Ron Yerksa, who saw the film, who mm -hmm. came to the screening uh, two years ago and, uh, and who asked me many questions about how we did the film and stuff like that. Uh -huh. It was great, it was a great, great experience, yes. I have a follow-on question to that, and I don't quite know how to phrase this, but I mean, so you're, you're, you're a, well, this film is, it's international, and it's shot in France and Tunisia, and my sense is you travel a lot and are engaged in a lot of, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I think of you as having a lot of international. Not anymore. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <laughs> we're not traveling. <laughs> you're right. Just on Zoom. But um, I'm curious, I don't know, coming out of GMM, what do you, do you have a, how am I, what's my question? Like, my question has to do with community and the filmmaking community and how you see yourself. Like, do you think of yourself as, you know, you're a Tunisian filmmaker working in Tunisia, or is it a broader sense of an international space that you occupy? And um, I, it's a very broad question. Anything yeah, you want to say about well, that? Well, tell you something. I, I don't believe in like, uh, in labeling, you know, the cinema in French, American, Tunisian. For me, there's, it's, cinema is a, is a, is an, you know, uh, a global, like, like a global thing. It, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, belong to anyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it, it has specificities, of course, you know, the cinema I'm doing is not the cinema you would be doing or anyone else would be doing somewhere else. And, you know, a friend, French or Belgian or Italian or whatever. But the difference is, but, but I, I don't think that there, I, I think that the cinema is, is, is global. And, and uh, I, I wouldn't see myself like say, saying that I'm a Tunisian filmmaker or whatever. Of course, I'm a Tunisian filmmaker, but my cinema is, I, I think that my cinema is, um, uh, how do you call that? Um, I would not international, but uh, universal. Mm -hmm. the cinema is universal. It's not just about my films, you know. So uh, I, I actually I'm um, I, I just shot a new film, you know, with, with no money at all. Uh, we did it under lockdown and at my place with my cat who's here. <laughs> Uh, and an actress who, who, an actress, a friend of mine who happens to, to live in, to, uh -huh. you know, to live nearby in the same district. And I brought the core, like the, the, the core of my, my big crew, but now we were like six or seven here. And uh -huh. I was like the main character and, and the, the director. And we were like not more than 10 persons at my place during three weeks. And we, we did a feature. Uh -huh. Fantastic. With, Are you with in post-production? You know is what I mean? Post-production? What? Are you in post-production now or where is yes, it? Yes, we just finished the uh, we just finished the, the the editing and now we're doing the special effects. We we even have special effects in this. <laughs> <laughs> see? Oh, see so, I can't wait to see it. That's great. Okay, I'll send you a link. That is fantastic. When it's finished. Of yeah. course. Yeah, it's it's a it's a life changing experience, and I think it's it's another whole way of seeing a different way of seeing seeing cinema and making cinema as well. You know what I mean? So, um, COVID nineteen is probably an eye opener about our future, about what we did wrong to the, this planet as well. And that's what the film is about as well, and also about. Um, um, us as, as filmmakers, you know what I mean? I think we can make films differently. Mm -hmm. That was one of my next questions for you was about COVID, you, what, what you're doing in COVID. So it's, you've, you've already answered it. And it's very exciting to hear. I, I do feel like 
people's creative impulses will not be stopped and they will find ways to adapt and, and create and tell stories. Sure, sure. Clearly doing that. Um, yeah. So I do, I do want to talk uh, one other question on Look At Me. So the film came out in 2018. It played a lot of festivals and then got, got released. And what was that experience for you? like for you, especially in, I'm curious in Tunisia, how the film was received and how it fits in sort of films that are typically in theaters in Tunisia, you know, what, uh, okay, what was so, your... So, so um, the film was like the number two box office film of the year in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. uh, so it did very, very well. Um, the theatrical release was great, amazing. Uh, the critical reception was great as well. Uh, the film was in many, many, many festivals. We got, well, well actually, the last prize we had uh, was in Marrakesh. You were there, actually, weren't you? No. I, I oh, you weren't. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, it's Nidal who got the, the, the Best Actor uh, Award. Okay, so um, it was good. It was good. It was actually well received by the critics and uh, uh, traveled all around the world. And uh, we stopped traveling because of COVID-19. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Wait. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, this is Sylvie. She and, this is like <laughs> and this is Fauzi. And this is Fauzi. There. And he, this, this cat actually is uh, one of the characters <laughs> of the film that we shot here at my place. Oh my gosh. He's Global in the cat media. <laughs> Global cat media. Hello. <laughs> so um, yes. we have a lot of questions here from the audience. Let me um, pull these up. Um, one of these, so the first one, I, I think you've already answered at least some of this. What were the challenges working with the child actor? Uh, is was he on the spectrum? Which I, I think you already answered that he was not. But were there challenges to working with a, a young a, young performer? Of course, it's always a challenge to to work. I, I mean, it's a, it's always a challenge to work with an actor, and in general, and it's a challenge. It's a, even a bigger challenge to work with a kid, and to ask him to, uh, you know, uh, to impersonate um, a, a kid with autism. Uh, because, uh, you know, for some kids, uh, from my experience during the casting auditions, um, some of the kids uh, would find the notion of autism abstract. Mm -hmm. Like they wouldn't, like, like I would show them films and, and I prepared like, like this, this, this film about that kid I told you about, which inspired me, who inspired me, the role of um, Yusuf in the film. And they, and because kids don't, I don't think that kids, you know, uh, play or act like kids uh, mimic. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you give them something and you show them something, you, t you tell them, okay, you have to do that. You know, they will do it if they're good actors. Okay. Actors. Okay. So, but with, with, with him, with, with the kid, it was totally different because he was, you know, he's so creative and, and he, he didn't find autism abstract as a notion, like he understood it all. And, and he was, you know, uh, he would give me ideas and, and he would develop his role. And, you know, it, it was an amazing experience because um, uh, it was challenging for me. It was challenging for him. But it, uh, every day when we were shooting the film, it was always like, you know, uh, there's always... Um, something um, different that he would give to the character and that was, you know, most of the people in the crew, like, you know, behind, when we were watching him, it was like, wow, it's, it's, it was always, we were always amazed by, by the way he dealt with, you know, the other characters and, uh, you know, uh, with the camera. And uh, yes, it's, it's extremely challenging, but with Idris, it was, it, 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 it was really, you know, exceptional and uh, it yeah. was wow. Yeah. That's great. We have um, uh, one, not a question, but a comment from uh, Mohammed Kowaja, 
who writes, thank you, Film Independent, for this wonderful opportunity and sharing Najib's beautiful film. We were part of this Sanad Film Fund when it came to us for development support as Retina, and it was a remarkable script at that time. It was an honor to support Najib and Imed, and so proud of the work they did to bring it to life. Thank you all. Oh, thanks, thanks. Um, Sanad, Sanad doesn't exist anymore, it's, it's a shame. That's a fund that doesn't exist anymore, mm. because because the uh, uh, they canceled the um, the uh, the festival. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yes. Uh, que question. Oh, thank from, you, thank you, Mohammed. Yeah. Uh, question from uh, somebody, Jonathan Schwartz, who says, "How can the film be used as an educational outreach tool to people with autism and other disabilities? Is that something you've explored?" Or has the distributor done that at all? Yes. So um, uh, the first week, we uh, what we did is that we showed the film. Uh, we gave the film to centers all around Tunisia to show the film to educators and uh, to teachers and uh, to children with autism. Okay. So that that was a great experience because um, um, I did some Q and A's with people from, you know, that, that those were for me the most, uh, the scariest and the most uh, dangerous, you know, uh, screenings. Because when you, you can fool the audience, but you can fool somebody who knows exactly what autism is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, like, if there's something wrong in the film, they will see that it's wrong, you right. know? And, um, uh, when I was in Toronto, uh, the premiere of the film, uh, th there was this uh, American woman, lady, who came uh, from New York City to Toronto to watch the film. Uh, and she, uh, during the Q&A, she said, uh, I came especially from, you know, uh, from New York City to see this film. I've been working with children with autism for 30 years. And... Uh, now, uh, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of children with autism, but, but I, I really can't say if this uh, boy is, uh, has autism or not, or if, wow. if he's an actor. Or, and that was, I was like, oh, that was like, you know, a, a big relief for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so what we did is that we, we have shown the film in, in schools, in centers, uh, and uh, we try, we wanted to film the film to reach it. So, so we had our like, like the normal audience in theaters, but we uh, also the distributor like gave the film to uh, centers and uh, educate and like educators and children with autism and um, voila. Beautiful. Uh, question from uh, I'm going to mispronounce your name. I apologize, but Akin Kalasir, did you write Lotfi as a character with ADHD? Sort of an interesting question. Yes. Um, no. <laughs> no, I never thought about that, but it's interesting, yes. Um, I never thought about that while writing the film, but uh, um, it's probably an unconscious thing. Probably, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I never, never thought about it, but uh, yes, yes. Uh, I have to watch the film. I haven't watched the film since its release, so I have to watch it once more because, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I can answer. But, but no, not during the writing of the film. And then uh, one more question. But it's interesting. I, I, like, I see where this comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another question from the same person. Did you have other endings in mind for the film or was it a reunion story? Since Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, there was another ending, and so the ending of the film, the first one that the commissions didn't like at all, is that he leaves his child in Tunisia and he goes back to France, and he discovers that he was filmed by his child on the boat, and and that sounded like a very pessimistic <laughs> and. Um, ending and i had uh, you know uh i had many many people like telling me you can't f like like this is this is a very cruel ending you know 
Like, you know, you do all, of, all this and right. he goes back. So what we did is that, you know, so the actual end of the film is that he goes back to France with his child, like he accepts his child. And then the one who will discover that video is the aunt. And I find that more beautiful. It's mm -hmm. more sensitive. So interesting. Well, Najib, I, I want to thank you. I mean, thank you so much for, for talking with us today. And, and thank you truly for being part of the film independent community, thank the you, global Josh. media makers community. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I just, I know all of us are so excited to see your new film, to see what you're cooking up. And um, to anyone watching this conversation, whether you live in the United States or elsewhere, if you, if, if this sounds interesting to you, if, if you resonate with what Najib was saying about filmmaking being universal, particular to where you live, but then universal in its reach and audience, we check out our website, go to filmindependent.org, become a member, check out Global Media Makers. Um, we really believe in that. And, and Najib, honestly, it's been such an honor to get to know you through the program and, and to um, sh you know, get to know your process and, and to be able to share your work with this audience. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And for and, showing uh, my film. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. And uh, we look thanks. forward to, to seeing you someday in person, whether it's in Tunisia or Los Angeles or New York Whenever City. you want. Wherever it is. Okay. L let's beat the COVID-19 before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Josh. All thank right. you guys and thank you thank you thanks uh, I, I wanted to thank the audience and everyone everybody who saw the film and who commented and who asked questions and anyway thank you very much thanks.